I know that this video may be a month late, but who isn't down for a James Bond ranking? Let's talk about Daniel Craig's James Bond movies. <music> My name is Movies and Training Studios, as you can probably tell if you're watching my video. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button. It really help me out. Um, hopefully, by the end of the year, I can have 50 subscribers. I know that that sounds like very, very typical YouTuber, but hey. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Let's just get into the ranking. Um, I love James Bond. Like, I've... I've found, like, a current, like, loving for him, I guess you could say. Uh, some of Dan- I, um, first watched Casino Royale, um, about, uh, what is it, a year ago now? And I wasn't in love with it, and you'll see where it is in the ranking. I wasn't in love with it, um, watched Quantum of Solace, I didn't like it at all, um, I watched Skyfall though, and I was I, I you'll you'll see my opinion on it. But got me into James Bond, and I watched more of the movies. Some of them hit or miss. Um, but yeah, I'm here to talk about Daniel Craig's career as Bond. So let's talk his career. So in my ranking of these movies, coming in at number five, easily is Quantum of Solace. Um, th this movie was not good. Um. It had a really messy script, possibly because at the time there was a writer's strike. It, it a lot of movies that that came out at the time, you can tell. Um, you, what Transformers Two: Revenge of the Fallen that had a really terrible script. This movie had a really bad script. Um, I couldn't really name more off the top of my head that had a bad script, but this one definitely did. Um. I don't like the cinematography in this movie either. It's shaky cam is not a thing that I would look forward to in a James Bond movie. It doesn't seem like that type of thing. It they seem more like a cinematic spy event movie and not like a Jason Bourne shaky cam. Like it's not the James Bond movies are not really typical to that. Um, and I think the villain is really weak in this movie. I, c I couldn't even tell you his name off the top of my head. He's just not, <laughs> not a very good villain or whoever it was. I don't even remember. Like, th this was not a good movie. Very forgettable. You can skip this one. Um, uh, at number four, Spectre. Uh, I know a lot of people hate this movie. I actually enjoy it. Um, it's got some of the best cinematography of Bond that I've seen, at least. Um, you've got Sam Mendes, who is, like, starting to get well-known for his tracking shots. you got the beginning of this movie has a really great tracking shot. Um, at When Bond is walking um, through the Dia de los Muertos parade, that was an awesome sequence. Um... And, like I said, Sam Mendes, known for the tracking shots. 1917, his movie from two years ago now? Yeah, almost two years ago. Um, ha the gimmick with the movie is that it was basically it made to look like one shot. This movie, it has some of the elements of that, like the beginning sequence. It, I think it's really great cinematography. The action is also really well done. It has, like, of my, uh, of the movies in Daniel Craig's career, I think this has probably the second or third best, um, behind my top two. Um, but, yeah, I think this is a little overhated. Um, 
I do ha have some issues with the script. It's not the best. Um, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's, it's kind of like a mixed bag at some points. Um, it's got moderately good performances, not like anything that would stick out for a James Bond movie. And Blofeld being an iconic villain, he's not really a great villain. I mean, he's a little bit more fleshed out in No Time to Die, which I think, like, elevated this movie a little bit for me. Um, and it, he's a little bit more fleshed out, even though you only get, like, two more scenes with him in No Time to Die. But still, um, I, I enjoy Spectre. Um, for, uh, cinematography-wise and action, it is great. Um, acting and script, it's not, it's not the best, but it's, it's decent. Um, coming in third place, the, well, I don't, what would you call the place? But anyway, Casino Royale, the one that everyone loves, usually people say it's their favorite Bond movie. I've never agreed with them. Um, I don't know, something about this movie, it's not that entertaining to me. It's got great dialogue, it's got a great villain, got great acting, great action, not a lot of it though. I think that's kind of where it falls for me. The opening action sequence of this movie, it's awesome. Um, it had me, tr it had like me entranced, wanting to watch more of this movie. And then I watched more of it, and I was kind of more mixed on it, but I still give it a good score, like a a 7 out of 10. It's it's good. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best, though. Um, it, there's, like I said, it's not a lot of action. It doesn't keep me as entertained as, say, Skyfall, No Time to Die, Spectre. But it, at its core, it is a lot better, and I think... I can go back and forth with Spectre. I like the action and the cinematography in Spectre a lot more than this one, but not a lot of the performances and um, acting and script-wise in Spectre, but I like it more in Casino Royale. So I kind of just like go back and forth in my mind which one I like more, but for right now, Casino Royale is coming up on top. So the runner-up for my ranking, no Time to Die, the newest James Bond movie. Maybe it's newness bias. Uh, bias. I cannot talk today. Newness bias. Because I watched it in the theaters. It's great. Um, I think it's one of those movies where it's got quite a few problems, but the the good really outweighs the bad. Um, I the the, the performances were outstanding. You have um, Daniel Craig, of course, as Bond. He's great. Um, the new 007, I don't remember her name, but she she was great. Um, Ana de Armas was great in it, and she was only in the movie for like 20 minutes. She she was awesome. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Um, I really like how she's like coming out as an actor in recent days. Knives Out, this. Um, Knives Out is a mixed movie for me, but I liked her in both movies. Uh, anyways, you got Ben Wishaw in the movie as well, which I thought was actually a really good character. Um, and it, all around the performances in this movie were just great. Um, beautiful camera work and action. Like, this this movie, like I said, it's, it's up there for my favorite um, action and cinematography. It's great uh looks beautiful uh and it the plot it, as a send off to daniel craig's james bond it's worthy it very worthy it's almost tied with my favorite for my favorite bond movie but the thing holding it back compared to number one which you probably know what it is the one thing holding it back well, I could say, I could say two things, but I didn't really feel the length, which is the the one thing that I am kind of mixed on. The length is is kind of unnecessary, 
but it's still a decent length. It's It's got a lot to unpack, and as a send-off, it kind of makes sense for Bond to have a long movie, like two hours and 40 minutes. It's a little long, but it, it, it's worthy. But the one thing that I can say I'm completely negative on, Rami Malek as the villain. He is not a very good villain, I have to say. He doesn't have a very clear motivation. He kind of just seems like a weird psycho with a burn on his face or whatever, and has a past with one of the main characters. It's, he just didn't really work as a, as a villain, and he didn't show up for very long. Like, the one guy that was on the, spoiler alert, the one guy that was on the boat that betrayed James Bond, I, I'm not gonna say his name, so it's not really a spoiler, but the one guy that was on the boat that betrayed Bond, and in, like, the hour mark, he kind of seemed more of the villain than Rami Malek did. I, it's something about that. I don't know. I mean, he didn't have a clear motivation, and for me, that kind of detracts him, but I still really loved this movie. So, if I rewatch it, I might find more negatives in the future. I mean, it, I do have kind of the bias of going to see it in the theaters and it being new, but I still really liked it. So, it comes in at number two. But number one, you probably know what it is. It's Skyfall. Uh, Skyfall, it's <laughs> literally perfect across the board for me. It's got great action. Sam Mendes, of course, he's got great action in his movies. Uh, you got amazing performances. Um, Javier Bardem as the villain was outstanding. He was, he was by far the best Bond villain I, I think I've seen in any of the movies. Um, who else was there? Um, the cinematography is great. The third act, I'd say, is worthy to watch on, like, a 4K television, like, a full setup. It's got the explosions. It's got color. It's, it's shot in nighttime, so it's, like... You see the brightness popping off the screen, and it looks amazing. Um, I really wish I had seen this on, like, IMAX or something, like, on the big screen. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have been interested in Bond then when it came out, but I still really love this movie. And for me, it comes in at number one. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, really hope you like this. Um... Please let me know what is your ranking of James Bond of Daniel Craig's James Bond movies. I'm sorry, I'm fumbling my words today. It's <laughs> I'm sorry. But let me know what your ranking is and please tell me which intro do you like more? The the one in this video or the one in my Dune review. Um so thank you guys for watching. Please hit the like button before you uh leave the video and subscribe if you are not yet subscribed just as a reminder. Thank you guys for watching and hope to see you in the next video. See ya.